Good morning. How are y'all? All right, y'all ready? You want to do it again? Good morning. How are y'all? Does anybody have any dry pasture that they'll let me borrow for just a minute? If your ponds aren't full this morning. Yes. T E R. <laughs> if your ponds aren't full this morning, you might need to look at your, uh, your dam because it might be gone. It's probably. Probably got a hole in it. Before we get started, Miss Sherry's got something she wants to share, so Miss Sherry, you got the floor. All right. We can all use a restart sometimes. Um, men, don't forget, Saturday morning, this coming Saturday, 7.30, men's breakfast and fellowship. Um, the scouts are, are going to cook breakfast. Also, the following, the next day, Sunday, comes after Saturday, right? Okay. It was the fourth and then the fifth, right? All right. <laughs> on, su <laughs> on Sunday, um, it's the fifth anniversary of the merger between Trails Inn and Cowboy Church Harrison County. So we're going. We're going to celebrate. We're going to eat. We're going to eat. Breakfast? What? We're going to eat. I mean, come on, Miss Sherry. Eating is a good celebration. No, uh, we're going to have a big breakfast that Sunday morning. Going to serve at about 8.30. So y'all come hungry physically and spiritually and, uh, and get refreshed. Um, both. Saturday is men's breakfast. Sunday is big breakfast. So come on in and get you, get you some breakfast on Sunday morning and, and get filled up. I'm glad Miss Sherry shared what she did this morning. Um, I, how many of you have ever been in a situation where you just you needed a second chance, you needed a restart, you needed, you needed just another try, right? So I'm supposed to be putting this together in a message for a couple of different reasons. But anyway, I'll just share a little bit with you. So about two years ago, we had an orphan calf. Had a little old calf, and her mama decided at about three months old that she didn't want to live no more, and she died. So we raised the calf. Now, I'll be honest with you. This calf was going to get raised up, get weaned, and go on the truck to the sale barn and be done. Well. 
My wife and daughter, they named this calf. So guess what? She'll be on the place until the day she dies. And so I'm sitting here thinking, Lord have mercy, another mouth to feed that's not going to produce nothing. Because she did not blossom for a long time. She looked like a straight running bottle baby that just wasn't going to make nothing. So anyway, I go feed Monday. And, and we could tell that she had been bred. She was pretty springy. I go and feed Monday, and lo and behold, what she got? She got a brand new baby calf. So I, you know, then all of a sudden I get blamed because the calf comes to me and don't go to them, but nonetheless. <laughs> but, you know, had we put that cow, that heifer on the truck, who's to say what she would have done? She might have went to somebody else's place. She might have went to somebody else's plate, you know. But you never know just because something doesn't look right in the beginning. Give it a little time. It'll work out. The Lord's got a plan for it. So let's go to the Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the rain. Lord, we thank you for the blessings. Lord, we thank you for the, the teachings that you just teach us, Lord. Sometimes Lord, when we just sit back and, and pay attention. Lord, we ask that you watch over us and you keep us safe. Lord, we, we're here today, Lord, just to, to grow in, in our knowledge and to grow with you, Lord, and just to be closer and tighter in our walk. Lord, we ask for, for healing and prayers and comfort, Lord, for the ones that can't be here today, Lord, if they're sick or traveling or, Lord, just whatever they got going on. Lord, we ask if there's somebody here that doesn't know you, Lord, that, Lord, they just, they have the strength to open their heart up and, and to get that relationship with you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for everything you do, and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome everybody. Sounds not mighty nice outside, doesn't it? Amen. Tell you what, Dave's one of them good old days you can us guys can stay inside and watch a Hallmark movie today. <laughs> Y'all like Hallmark movies? Any guys watch Hallmark movies? Nobody? Oh, Eric does. Good. Or Grit Channel, whichever. But uh you know, it talks about in the book of Ephesians, uh, putting on the God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. And uh, I know so many times I, you know, didn't respond like I should when adversity hits during, and we all have adversity. And uh, it's how you respond to that adversity uh, is what makes it, makes the whole deal. Okay. A lot of times I didn't respond right, and there's been times where I did respond right, but right. But it always helps to the first day, thing in the morning is ask to to put that uh, the armor of God on every morning. Say a little prayer and put that uh, <clears throat> hold that sword, hold that sword, put that helmet of salvation on the sword of the spirit. I can't talk this morning. <laughs> Breastplate of righteousness. <laughs> Right, Terry? Right. Uh, it always just helps to say a prayer to, to get ready for the day and let him be your rock that you stand on that day. So hope you all enjoy this song. This song is called He's My Rock, My Sword, and My Shield. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a hub in the middle of the wheel. He's a lily of the valley. He's a bright and morning star. Makes no difference what you say. I'm going on my knees and pray. I'm going to wait right here for Jesus till he comes. Because Jesus is mine. I am forgiven. I'm holding his hand. I'm going to heaven. Because I found a wonderful Savior who blesses me forever. I'm here, and thank God he is mine. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He 
He's the lily of the valley. He's that bright and morning star. Makes no difference what you say. I'm going on my knees and pray. I'm going to wait right here for Jesus till he comes. He's my rock, my sword, my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's a lily of the valley. He's that bright and morning star. Makes no difference what you say. I'm going on my knees and pray. I'm going to wait right here for Jesus till he comes. I'm going to wait right here for Jesus till he comes. Glory, 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 somebody 
touch me. Glory, glory, glory. Somebody touch me. Must have been the hand of the Lord. Must have been the hand of the Lord.
but you found no escape just hold on to his promises he said that he'd make a way feel Satan close in. Don't give up, don't give in. He'll make a way right on time. Standing at the Red Sea, no place to go. Pharaoh's army was closing in. They'd soon over strong hand he rolled back the waters and made a way out again he'll make a way in the middle of nowhere when it seems no Don't give up, don't give in. You'll make a way right on time. He'll make a way in the middle of nowhere. When it seems no one really cares, he's there by your side. And he'll make a way when you feel Satan closing. Don't you give up, don't give in. He'll make a way right on time. Don't you give up, don't give in. He'll make a way right on Good stuff right there. Hey, if we have a comeback song, let's do that one, Donna. That make it easy, huh? On everybody but her. Oh, how y'all doing? Good. Y'all have a good week? Who did not get rain? Hey, praise God, though. Praise God. You know, we may complain about it today, but we'll be praying for it in August. So... Hey, man, thank, thank God. Thank God for the rain. Uh, we, were, we had our uh, seven days of prayer, and uh, we finished up yesterday, um, seventh day. And the cool thing was, about the time that uh, we, had already, we had already gone through the, the prayer requests and the prayer cards, and we had already gone through that, and we were, we were uh, getting, ready to, getting ready just to, I was going to share some scripture about, about healing. So our seventh day was around healing, and just to, to, uh, to share some scriptures around that. All of a sudden, the rain started coming down on that old tin roof, man, and all, I did, we just stopped. <sighs> all the things that we got going on in our lives, all the things that distract us, all the things that pull at our heart, all the troubles, all the woes, the good times and the bad times, take a moment in your life just to stop. <sighs> just to be still. And know that he's God. Not just to know that he is a God. Not just to know that he is the God. But just to know that he is God. Period. God over your circumstances. God over your lives. He alone is God. We'll get into this. Oh, I better pray in too. Because I'll, I'll squirrel off all these things pulling at my mind, at my heart. Let me, let me, let me, let me pray in. 
Father God, I thank you and I praise you for the opportunity we have today, Lord, to, uh, to be here in this place. God, I thank you, Lord, that, uh, that we're here in the Father's barn. And I thank you, Lord, in the Father's house. Father, there's a bunch of, bunch of crazy kids and family that gets together, Lord, that just uh, come together just to have fun and to see what it is that you would have for us today. God, I pray that you lead me, guide me, direct me, and help me, Father, to share what it is that you've given me to share today. I pray, Lord, that you open our hearts. Open our hearts to receive the seed of the message that you've given for every one of us today. It's not by chance that we're here today for this message. God, there's something that you want us to get from this. There's something that you want me to give from this. So, Father, I pray that you flow through me to give it. I pray also you prepare my heart to get it. I thank you that you prepare our hearts to get it. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We bind up old Slick and his, his attempts to, uh, to distort and to distract and to, uh, and to detour the plan that you have for us today. God, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been in, uh, last week we started in, in uh, 2 Kings. 2 Kings, if you've got your, if you got your Bible, turn to 2 Kings 5, 1. We're going to be there. We're going to be there shortly. He may have said it already. If he did, I apologize. How many, uh, how many first-timers we got here today? Any first-timers? Hey, man, good to have y'all. Good to have y'all. We're honored. We know y'all could have chose to worship anywhere else, and we're sure proud that you chose to worship here with us at, at uh, Trails Inn. And uh, God bless you. Thank y'all for... Thank y'all for, for raising your hand. How many second timers we got in here? Uh huh. How many some timers we got in here? How many all all the? Oh, I almost said all timers. How many all the time? Hey, it was the all timers that raised their hand on the first timers because they couldn't remember the last time or the second time, but they're here this time. <laughs> oh man, it's okay to have fun in God's house. You could not have fun. In the house, in the in the in in the church house, I grew up in with my grandparents, Monahans, Texas, at First United Methodist Church. God bless you. wasn't yeah, you wasn't fun. Shut up! Don't you say a word. And as soon as I tried to, I got pinched right inside here. I don't know how many of y'all ever got pinched by your grandma right up inside your thigh, but I, I promise you, <laughs> two things gonna happen. One, you gonna yell out. Number two, you will get smacked by grandpa. And number three, you will not be allowed back in that in that service again you're going back with the little wranglers you're obviously too young but you know what here hey, come on with it you know if uh if, if you can't go if you can't go an hour without a dip of snuff man raise your hand we will bring you a cup and a napkin get you a dip sit back and enjoy the service kick off your boots and just uh just enjoy uh you know i was thinking about my grand this had nothing to do with the service i'm just gonna go with what god kept me to go with I had a message for last Sunday. I got through the first part, and we never got past God has a plan. And that's okay. That's okay. Uh, But I got to thinking about this. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that your salvation or your entrance into heaven doesn't depend on somebody other than Jesus? Man. And I got to thinking. My grandma told me this a long time ago, but it it stuck with me. I was just a, a little guy, and she told me this story. And uh, she said this husband and wife, she said, man, they fought all the time. She said, but they stayed together. Fifty-something years, this family made it. Stayed together the whole time through thick and thin till death did they part, and the wife passed away first. When she passed away, she went to heaven. And uh, she went on into heaven, and as she got there, and she saw Simon Peter who was standing right at the gate, and he said, before you get in, I need to know, I need to know, matter of fact, I need you to spell the access code that gets you into heaven. She said, that's easy, J-E-S-U-S. Simon Peter says, come on in. About that time as she was stepping in, somebody hollered, Simon, Simon, we need you over here. So Peter said, okay. He said, ma'am, can you just, you know what to do? She said, yeah, access code, just ask him to spell it. And he said, yes. He said, I'll be right back. He leaves. Next thing you know, she looks up and who is coming down the path? Her husband. So he comes up, and she says, what are you doing here? He said, I was so brokenhearted without you. He said that I just quit eating, drinking, and and just punched my ticket on into into heaven. Here I am. And uh, she said, wait, there's an access code. You got to be able to spell the access code. She said, and the access code is Czechoslovakia. 
I rarely tell a joke to kick off a service, but I'm going to tell you what. I started thinking of my Moomaw, and uh, she, Mo, call her Moo for short. And, uh, but I, I started thinking of my Moomaw, and, and uh, two jokes she ever told me in my life, that was one of them. The other one I can't tell here, and <laughs> which shocked me. That, and, but, you know, just, uh, just some, some, godly, some godly upbringing. But I'm so proud that the things that God has for us in life, the things that, that, that God gave his only one son to provide a way that if we receive his one and only son, if we receive the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, that punches our ticket into heaven. I'm so glad it's not up to my wife to ask me to spell Czechoslovakia because I would have to Google it, and I don't know if they have cell service in heaven, so it's better if I just don't. We're going to be in uh, 2 Kings, 2 Kings uh, chapter 5, we're going to be in verse 1, and because I got a part of the way through this message, I don't even know where I left off. It was just one of those, I don't know, guys, it was just one of those God messages that he just took off, and I just started sharing what he laid on my heart to share, so we'll just, I don't know where I left off, so if you're thinking, well, you said that last Sunday, it's just because I can't remember, I can't remember where we were, but I'm going to start with verse 1. Uh, Y'all read on the screen with us if you want. Now Naaman, commander of the armies of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given him victory, had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Several things that we know about Naaman, I'll go through them quick because I'm pretty sure I covered this. He was the supreme commander of the armies of Syria. He was a great man of social standing. He was an honorable man in the eyes of his master, a man highly regarded by the king of Syria because of his military victories. He was a mighty man of valor. In that, that term was used in the Old Testament for both a man of great wealth and courageous character. With all of these things, he had all the money, he had all the prestige, he had all the power, he had all the victories, he had all of the army, he had, his, he had the king on his side, with all of these resources, all of these things, and we're going to see later just how rich the man really was, with all of these resources at his disposal, it was powerless to help him with the one thing that afflicted him the most, leprosy. Leprosy. Man, when you got leprosy in the Old Testament days, that was a death sentence. It was incurable. Today, I think it's cured by penicillin. But is that right, nurses? Well, yeah, you, it, biocillin, give you a shot in the booty, you, you make you all good. But in those days, there wasn't no shot they could give. It was, a, it was the shot. You, you got shot in those days. And the skin disease would spread and pieces of your body would rot off. It was a horrible death. It was a horrible thing to have. With all these things that he had at his disposal, he was powerless over the one thing that he was diagnosed with, and that was leprosy. Your resources can get you out of trouble. Your resources can keep you out of jail. Your resources can provide everything that you need, that you think you need. It can help you every which way possible until you get that diagnosis that money can't pay for, until you get, that, get in that, that trouble so deep that there is no amount of money that's able to get you out. What do you do when your resources, when your resources aren't enough? I love this. In verse 1, it said, Because by him the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, the Lord had given him great victory. When I was looking, uh, MacArthur confirms what we all see when it's kept the Lord like that, that all of his success was attributed to the God of Israel, to the God of Israel who is sovereign over all things. Church, he chooses who he chooses, and God does what he wants. It's all up to him. It's all up to him. First Chronicles 29, 11 through 12 says it this way. Yours, O Lord, yours who? O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom. Who? Oh, this side is on it. This side is on it. Yours is the kingdom. Who? This side? O oh Lord. And you are exalted as head over m- most. Oh, A double L. That ain't detergent. He is exalted over all. Verse 12. 
Both riches and honor come from who? You. Who is the you? God. Man, that side is on it. Is that screen working? <laughs> Just making sure. Just making sure. And you reign over how much? All. In your hand is power and might. In your hand, in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to how many? So it comes from who? God. It comes from God. It's at his discretion. He has all power, all might, all authority, and he gives it to whomever he will. Romans 13, 1 says this for you New Testament folks. Did I give it to you? It's okay if I didn't. I've got it. It says, everyone must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God. And it also says that all authority, has, and he puts in place whomever he will. So here he is, not even of the nation of Israel. Here he is, a commander of another army, pagans, Gentiles. They're not even Israelites. But it's, it's Naaman that the Lord gives all of these victories, gives the authority, gives the power, give these victories to Naaman. He's been blessed in, in victory. He's been blessed by God. And yet here he is afflicted, afflicted with this disease. Let's look at uh, 2 Kings 5. Let's start with verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back a captive young girl from the land of Israel. So here he is, blessed by God. Goes, his, his army goes on a raid, goes into the land of Israel, and brings back captives. Cap, cap, captivates, not the word, holds captives. Yeah, this, uh, this, is, this Israeli girl, and she waited on Naaman's wife. So this Israeli maid, this young lady, was stolen as a captive. She was taken against, against her will, and she was given to Naaman's wife. Let's go to verse, let's go to verse 3. Then she said to her mistress, this maiden said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Verse 4. And Naaman went in and told his master, saying, Thus and thus said the girl who was from the land of Israel. Verse 5. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I'll send a letter to the king of Israel. Notice, the king is only sending a letter. That's going to tie in later. Only sending a letter. So he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten changes of clothing. The reason I said before that, a couple of things I want to note here, the reason I said before that he was a wealthy man, when you look up this uh, ten talents of silver, ten talents of silver is 750 pounds of silver, and today's currency, it's $215,000 in silver that he took along with him. But silver is not as, as expensive as gold, is it? So when it says he took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, that's 150 pounds of gold. 150 pounds of gold is $3.6 million in today's money. So was he expecting to have to pay a lot for a miracle? Yeah, yeah, like $3.89 million, and he was willing to do it. On top of that, man, while you're spending my money, I want you to dress fine. I done been to Cavenders. I done got you 10 changes of clothing. I done got you 10 pairs of boots to go with them. I done got you ostrich belly, paracou. I done got you all kind, man. I got you the underbelly alligator, man. I even got you. I even went to Max Hatter's and I hooked you up with a 100X hat from 10 of them from Max Hatter's. So he done spent some money, didn't he? That's $10,000 worth of hats alone. So he done spent, he is prepared to bless someone really big, really big. And the reason I point that out is the king only sent a letter, but Naaman has all of these resources that he, he is expecting to have to pay for a miracle. Huh. Some of you got it. How many of you are doing all of these things, all of these things, 
and you're trying to work and you're trying to do and you're trying to make it happen every way that you think you could happen. You're trying to pay for a miracle that God, if you'll just do it in my life, I'll do this. But I want you to know, Jesus paid full price on the cross and before the cross so that you could have the very thing that you're, 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 you're trying to pay for with your own efforts. Christ already paid for it. He already bought it and it's yours. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is receive it. And we're going to see that later in this story. <laughs> Jesus didn't put it on layaway. <laughs> I tell this story all the time. It popped in my head. Old buddy of mine, Harvey Cox, has Cox trailers, and we were visiting one day, and I looked down, and I said, man, there's some nice ostrich belly boots right there. I said, dude, I bet that's every bit of $1,000. I said, I wish I had Harvey Cox kind of money. He said, I ain't even got Harvey Cox kind of money. I said, why are you wearing the boots? He said, you ever heard of layaway? (laughs) I am so glad Jesus didn't put our salvation on layaway. He didn't put it on layaway. He He paid full price. You can accept the benefit of that gracious benefit. The benefit of that benefit through Christ, free of charge, because Christ paid it all. Christ paid it all. God has a plan. That was the first thing I wanted to point out. The second thing I wanted to point out, go back to uh, verse uh, 2. Go back to verse 2. Then she said to her mistress, and the Syrians had gone on a raise. They took a, they took a young captive girl. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria. Here's what I think is awesome. Me and Jim were just talking about this last week. If somebody came and took me, and I was was just a little fella, maybe say I was a teenager, if some captive would have busted in our doors and would have took me me by force and made me live and serve as a servant for somebody else, and took me away from my family and everything, my family, my friends, and everything that I knew, would you be very happy? No. Would you be a little bitter and upset? Oh, yeah. I'd be figuring out how I could spit in his burger before I served it to him every single time I had to cook her some food. Man, don't act like y'all wouldn't. And I'd be paying, I'm paying somebody back. Yeah, I ain't going to, I'll probably work hard because I really don't like whoopings, but. Uh, but every chance I got to do something, I probably would. But not this girl. Not, that, not this Israeli girl. She wasn't bitter. She wasn't upset. If she did, she didn't show it. It didn't say anything about it. She saw that her master had a need, and she knew the one person who was able to meet that need. I thought that was beautiful. If only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria, she could have took that information to her grave. She could have just withheld that, never said nothing about that. Naaman would have died, and after he was dead and gone, then she could have told the widow, if only my master had gone to Samaria. And she'd say, well, why didn't you tell us that while he was still alive? Because I was angry. I don't know how, but I bet you she did. She found a way to forgive the one that wronged him the most, the one that took her the one that stole her, the one that kept her captive, the one that was holding her against her will. I don't know what people have done to you in your life. I don't know what hurt that you've come in here with. I don't know the pain that, that, that you have in your heart that just doesn't go away. And you think about it every time you think of this person. I want you to know that there is healing for that through Jesus Christ that he didn't just pay for our salvation and the benefit of, of getting our ticket punched from hell. He came to pull, pay the full price that he will help forgive. He will help you to forgive those that, uh, that have hurt you and done you wrong. You think about Jesus, the whippings he took, the beatings he took, smacked in the head, a crown of thorns, smacked with a reed, all the bruising, the kicking, the spitting in his face, the pulling out his beard, all those things that happened to him and nailed him on a cross. And still, he looked down from that cross and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What a perfect example of forgiveness from someone who was done wrong and never did anything wrong. Maybe it wasn't your fault, but you were done wrong. Jesus is the perfect example of how we do that. He wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your heart. This girl says, 
if only my master with the, was with the prophet who is in Israel. Let's go 2 Kings 5. Let's look at verse 6 as we're moving on through. Then he brought the letter to the king, the king of Israel, which said, now be advised. Notice, he didn't give all that money. He just brought the letter. He's going to keep all that money for the one who's going to be able to do the work. Maybe he's going to let them do the work, and then he's going to try to pay them. I don't know if I would give $3.8 million to somebody that I didn't know if they could really do it or not. Would you? No, man. Hey, I'm happy to pay for service. Man, I'll you tell you this. I got a $100 bill, and it's going to cost $100 to get a tooth pulled, and that tooth is killing me. But there's a whole lot of teeth in your mouth, ain't there? Yes, yes. And are you going to pay him ahead of time? What if he pulls the wrong tooth? I'm going to pull him after. Yeah, you got the right one. Uh, here's $100. Same thing here. Same thing here. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised. <laughs> Anytime a king tells you, be advised. Now be advised. When this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you may heal him of his leprosy. Verse 7. And it happened when the king of Israel read the letter that he tore his clothes and said, Am I a God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. You serious? He wants me to do so, but does he think I'm a God that I can just heal him? That I can just heal him? I know what it is. He knows I can't heal him. And the only reason he sent that letter to tell me to heal him is because he knows I can't, and he's trying to pick a fight. If that son of God wants a fight, he's going to get a fight. And he's so angry and upset that he rips up, and he just rips his clothes. Like, come on with it. Ooh. Now he ripped his clothes in distress. What am I going to do? And he rips his clothes. I guarantee that he's aware of how great a, a, a warrior Naaman is and that the, and the king that he serves is uh, he's got a mighty kingdom. Verse 8. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? What? What's the matter with you, boy? Please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Please let him come to me, so that he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. I paused right there for just a minute and, and just sought the Lord to see. Sometimes you just know there's a message in that somewhere. And here's, here's what I feel like. Church, we don't have to be the one that God uses to answer everybody's prayer. We don't have to be the one. But isn't it awesome when we can be the one he uses to connect us to the one that he uses to answer their prayer? Man, I tell you what, I have some buddies that they're like, man, I don't know. I, I, I struggle with how to tell somebody about Jesus. And I said, man, that's okay. He said, I know I'm saved. He said, but sometimes I struggle. What do you say? What do you say? I say, hey, man, we would love to have you at Trails Inn Cowboy Church, Harrison County, right down the street. And, and uh, right there between 80 and 20 on Hallsville, you come on. We would love to have you. That's all you got to say. He goes, that's it. I said, that's it. I said, if you're not comfortable with it, uh, don't just say, man, I hope everything works out. <laughs> you're just going about your business. Take time to invite them to church. Man, I may not have all the answers, brother, sister, but one thing I do know, man, won't you come on out to Trails in Cowboy Church? I said, they'd love to have you. And, and uh, man, you get you some Jesus at the same time. While you're eating a donut, while you got a mouthful of donut and coffee, you can get you some Jesus, too. He said, man, that folks probably be able to help you out there. Sometimes it's as simple as that. You don't have to have all the answers. Don't let old slick beat you up thinking, man, you don't know nothing. You're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to, man, you tell him, shut on up. All you got to do is invite them. Put them in position to get the miracle and the answer that they've been looking for. Uh, I thought of this came to me. And uh, y'all don't have it, so don't freak, panic, start trying to find the scripture. In uh, Mark chapter 2, uh, it tells the story. It tells a story about a fellow who had been paralyzed, and he was on a mat, and he couldn't move. He couldn't do nothing. I mean, he'd been on this mat a long time. So if he had to go, he either went <laughs> or, 
or he called for somebody who could come. So to say that that area where he was was probably a mess would be an understatement. It probably was a mess unless somebody was right there taking care of him all the time. But I'll tell you what this guy had. He has some buddies. And his buddies, I'm sure he asked them all the time, can you help me? Can you help me? Yeah, man, what do you need? Man, I just need to be able to get here or get there. Can you help me? But what he really needed was healing. What he really needed was to be able to walk. What he really needed was to not to be paralyzed anymore. So one day, I'm sure, he said, fellas, man, I wish that I could not be paralyzed anymore. I'm tired of being on this mat, laying in this mess, and, uh, and I, need, I just wish there was somebody that could help me. None of them, none of his buddies, and it says there was four of them, none of his buddies had what he needed to heal him. They could get him from here to there, but they couldn't do anything to heal him. So what they did was they knew that Jesus was in the area. So it says that four of them picked this fella up, and it said he, he carried him to Jesus. But when he got to Jesus, there was, so, there was so big a crowd inside the house, outside the house, that they could never make their way in to Jesus. So, man, they found a way. They climbed up on top of the house. The Bible says they tore the roof off, and after they tore a hole in the roof. Can you imagine what their buddy was thinking? when they, you, You're thinking, because it says that he had him on the mat. They had to lasso that summer gun all the way around, and they either had, I pictured they pulled him up this way, but he could have pulled him up that way. Either way, you think it was a fun ride for him, wrapped up like a burrito, tied up as they pulling him up the side of this house. I'm sure he's hollering, whoa, man, what are you doing? You said you needed help. So they pull him up. When they get him up to the top, they're walking up on this roof. They're straddling the rafters, trying not to fall through. And as they get him over there, remember, he can't help. He's a paralytic. They get him up there, and they say, man, we got a hole big enough. My first thought was they laid him down like this, and Jesus is standing there in the middle of the floor, and they let him down right in front of Jesus. I was thinking in my mind, I don't know, it's just me. They let him down, and he turns around, and he goes, hey. And the guy goes, hey. <laughs> they could have let him down flat. You know, I never thought about that until today. But they, they let him down. They let him down right in front of Jesus. Church, his buddies couldn't give him what he needed but they got him in position to get what he needed. Sometimes that's, what, that's all it takes for us to get him in position. They loved him enough to tote him all the way to where he was to get him up on that roof, to tear a hole in the roof, and to let him down right in front of the master. Man, I want some buddies like that. I got some buddies like that. Buddies that didn't tell him. <laughs> they didn't tell him what he they got him in position to get what he needed. They got him in position to get what he needed. Let's back to the text, verse 9. Then Naaman went with his horses and chariots, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him. Oh, wait. I was, oh, yeah, I busted out laughing. Then Elisha sent a, message, a messenger out to him. Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored to you, and you shall be clean. Verse 11. But Naaman became furious. He became furious and went away and said, Indeed, indeed, I said to myself, Indeed, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Verse 12. Are not the Abana and Far par the rivers of Damascus better than the waters in Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and he went away in a rage. I'm going to finish up with this right here and then we'll, we'll do part three next week. Here's the thing. Number one, <laughs> ain't it funny how God's answer to prayer seldom meets our expectations? Man, if any of you have ever had your answer to prayer, maybe ta for me one time it was, it was property taxes that I couldn't pay seeking and praying. I had surgery money or tax money, but it was the same money. I chose the surgery. And God made a way, but it wasn't the way that I thought he was going to go, but he made a way. Ain't it funny how God's answer to prayer seldom meets our expectation? Maybe the end result 
meets the expectation, but seldom the process, seldom the way the Lord goes about it. The journey he takes us on our way to answer prayer. Maybe Naaman expected God through the prophet Elisha to do all the work. Maybe he expected him to do all the work. Matter of fact, he even said, I expected him to call on the Lord, wave his hand, heal leprosy. After all, Naaman had traveled all that way. I came all this way, all this way. Man, I did all the work. You don't know how hard it was to get $3.8 million to you. All these chariots, all these horses, all this way. I come all this way. You send a messenger. You don't even come out yourself. You send a messenger to the door and says, Thus saith the man of God, Go and dip seven times in the Jordan River. Boom. <laughs> Remember, he's a mighty man of valor, commander of armies, filthy stinking rich, a man who's full of, in, full, full, full of valor. Man, he's somebody. You going to talk to me like that? And he leaves there in a rage. But instead, God, through the prophet, instructed Naaman to go and to do before he even healed him. Go and do, and then you'll be healed. What he wanted him to do is do all the work and just let me be healed. But what the prophet told him, what God told the prophet Elisha to tell him was, no, you go and you do something and then you'll be healed. What is it that God is wanting from you? What is it that you've been praying for? And God is wanting you. No, you go and you do, and then you'll receive the answer to your prayer. For me, it was unforgiveness. Uh, I was adopted. I met my biological father years later, and I was struggling with unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. And I was, God, take this unforgiveness away from me. Every time, I just don't want to be like that anymore. Every time, we, every time I hear his name, I, I get upset and I get mad. And, and I just don't want to be that. I don't want to do that anymore. And instead of God saying, thus saith the Lord, I take this. He didn't do that. <laughs> he laid it on my heart to go and to spend a whole Saturday with him. Take off from work. Go spend a Saturday with him. Hold his hand and tell him I loved him. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. And God, I'm going to tell you right now, church, I don't know what it is that God's wanting you to go and do so that you can get what it is that you're looking for. I, but some, I can tell you, sometimes it's not pleasant. Sometimes it's not easy. But if God wants you to do it, he loves you too much to, let, to not allow you to do it. He loves you too much to let go of it because he wants you to get where it is that you're trying to get to. So, and God will outlast you. So he outlasted me. I took a Saturday off. I went. I sat down with Bo. I visited with him. And in that conversation, I reached over and I took him by the hand. And I said, Bo, I said, I love you. And I forgive you. Whew. I started bawling. He started bawling. And unforgiveness just started melting away. He died that same year. I would have never had the opportunity to get my relief that I thought. I would have never had that opportunity to be free of that unforgiveness if I had not gone and done what it was that God wanted me to do. <laughs> Man, I'm thinking about this. So many times myself, I come to church and I expect God to just do what I ask. Oftentimes I come to God with my hand out. and I've been trying to pray more, just worship more and thank him more. Oftentimes, church, I come to God with my hand out instead of my hand up. I want to be more about worshiping. God, he's done, God has done so much for us. He's been so good to us. Even when it don't feel like it, he's still good. He's still good. I need to have my hand up more, praising him for what he's already done, praising him for his answered prayer before I even see the evidence of it. So April and I were talking about this today. 22 weeks she's had this migraine, migraine with aura, sick, uh, just not good, not good, not good, not good at all. But we're thanking God for the answer to prayer when we don't even see the evidence of it yet. God, thank you that she is pain-free. Thank you that she is healed. All the while, she's saying, Ugh. We're going to walk. We're, de we're, we're, 
We are determined to walk by faith and not by sight. Closing, God has a plan. He has a plan, church, to answer your prayer. And it'll come in His time. And it'll come about in His way. But I want you to know that God has a plan. Let's pray out. Father God, I thank you and I praise you, Lord, for your word today. I thank you, Lord, for the, uh, oh, God, just the encouragement. I thank you, Lord, for leading me, guiding me, directing me. I thank you, Lord, you gave me the word I needed right on time. God, I praise you and I thank you that you spoke it through me. Now, Father, I've chunked that seed. That seed's been chunked. I reached in the bag you gave me and I scattered seed. I pray, Lord, that that seed fall on good ground in our hearts. I thank you, Lord, that we chew on it. We meditate on it. We think about it. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to help us to do that so we can get a hold to this word right here. Lord, something in this message that hit us right in the heart, I pray, Lord, that we hang on to it. We stand on it because it's the truth of God's word. Lord, we love you. I pray you bless everyone here, everyone who's watching, listening on Facebook, who will be watching on YouTube later. God, I pray, I pray you bless them richly. I pray you bless them abundantly with more and more of your presence. God, I pray that you grow your relationship with us. I thank you, Lord, for not leaving us, not forsaking us, not abandoning us. But, God, I thank you that where we go, you said you'd go, and you walk with us. Lord, we love you, don't deserve you, and sure thankful for you. God, you are so good. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week.